The city was a cage, metal and glass, a labyrinth of cold, sterile corridors. Jax had lived in it for as long as he could remember. He'd never known anything else. The sky was a distant memory, a rumor whispered in the wind ducks. He worked in the data refinery, a cavernous room filled with the hum of machines. His job was to process information, to sift through the endless stream of data and extract the meaning. It was tedious, monotonous, but it kept him alive. Outside the refinery, the city was a different place, a place of surveillance and control. The authorities watched everything, from the cameras that lined the streets to the chips implanted in every citizen's wrist. A single wrong move, a single word out of line, and you were gone. Jax had learned to keep his head down, to say nothing, to do nothing. He was a ghost, a shadow in the city. He existed, but he didn't live. One day, a new face appeared in the refinery. Her name was Hope, and she was everything Jax wasn't. She was bright, bubbly, and full of life. She laughed easily, and her eyes sparkled with a childlike wonder. Jax was immediately drawn to her. He found himself spending more and more time near her, listening to her stories, her dreams. She talked about the outside world, about the sun, the grass, the ocean. It was a world he had only ever heard about, a world that seemed so distant, so unattainable. Hope was different. She didn't seem afraid of the city or of the authorities. She saw the world with a sense of wonder, a belief that things could be different. One day, Hope confided in Jax. She told him about a secret organization, a group of people who were fighting back against the city's control. They were planning a breakout, a chance for freedom. Jax was hesitant. He had lived his entire life in fear. The idea of rebellion seemed crazy, dangerous. But Hope's enthusiasm was contagious. She painted a picture of a world where people were free to think, to speak, to live. It was a world that Jax had never imagined. He agreed to join them. The plan was simple, but it was risky. They would disable the security systems, breach the outer wall, and make a run for it. It would be a long shot, but it was their only chance. The night of the breakout, Jax and Hope, along with a small group of others, gathered at a secret location. As they prepared for their escape, Jax couldn't help but feel a sense of excitement. For the first time in his life, he was doing something that mattered. They made their move. The plan went smoothly. They disabled the security systems, breached the wall, and found themselves outside, under a sky filled with stars. It was a sight he had never seen before, and it filled him with a sense of awe. As they ran, Jax looked back at the towering structures, the endless maze of metal and glass. He was free. He had escaped. But he knew that this was just the beginning. There was a long road ahead, a fight for freedom that would not be easy. But he was ready. He had found his purpose, and he would not let it go. The world outside was not what he had expected. It was a wasteland, a sprawling expanse of ruin and decay. The city had been a prison, but they had to be careful, always watching their backs. The first few days were the hardest. They had to scavenge for food, avoid the roaming drones, and find shelter. But Hope's spirit never wavered. She saw potential in every crumbling building, every rusting car. They stumbled upon a group of survivors who had built a small community in the ruins. They were suspicious at first, but Hope's charm won them over. They shared their stories, their fears, and their dreams. The leader of the group, a grizzled man named Marcus, took them in. He had seen the city's grip on the world and knew the price of freedom. He had been waiting for someone to join the fight. Jax and Hope became the heart of the rebellion. Her optimism was a beacon in the dark, and his cynicism was a knife that cut through the lies of the regime. Together, they began to plan their next move. They would need to find more allies to spread the word of their cause. It would mean going back into the city, back into the belly of the beast. But they were not the same people who had escaped. They had tasted freedom, and now they were hungry for more. The night before their return, Hope looked at Jax with a mix of excitement and fear. We can do this, she said, her voice trembling. Jax nodded, a small smile playing on his lips. Yeah, he said, we can. They had nothing but optimism in each other. But in a world where courage was a rare commodity, it was the most powerful weapon they had. The next day, they set out, armed with nothing but their wits and a newfound determination. They slipped back into the city, the gleaming monoliths towering over them like silent sentinels. The city was eerily quiet, 
the usual hum of life replaced by the mechanical whispers of the surveillance drones. Jax felt a shiver run down his spine as they moved through the shadows, their steps echoing in the emptiness. Hope, however, remained unflappable. Her eyes darted around, taking in everything. She pointed out potential hideouts, escape routes, and weak spots in the security. Jax watched her, marveling at her courage. They managed to avoid detection, but it was clear that the city was on high alert. The drones were more numerous, the patrols more vigilant. The regime had not taken their escape lightly. As they moved deeper into the city, Jax began to notice something strange. The citizens' eyes, once empty and lifeless, now held a flicker of anticipation. Whispers of their escape had spread like wildfire, igniting a spark of rebellion. People began to approach them, sharing messages of support and even slipping them supplies. It was a stark contrast to the lifeless automatons they had once been. Their first act of rebellion was to hack into the city's public address system. Hope's voice, filled with passion and conviction, echoed through the streets. She spoke of freedom, of a world beyond the city's cold embrace. The reaction was immediate. Drones swarmed their location, lights flashing and sirens wailing. The authorities had found them. Jax and Hope sprinted through the alleyways, dodging the probing beams of the drone's searchlights. They ducked into a dilapidated building, their hearts racing. This isn't going to be easy, Jax panted, his breath coming in ragged gasps. Hope grinned, her eyes alight with excitement. But it's going to be worth it. They set up camp in the ruins of an old library, surrounded by the ghosts of knowledge long forgotten. It became their base of operations, a symbol of the faith they brought to the desolate landscape. As their influence grew, so did the danger. The regime sent more drones, more soldiers. The nights were filled with the sound of distant explosions and the screams of those who had dared to dream. But Jax and Hope remained steadfast, their bond growing stronger with each passing day. One evening, as they sat among the crumbling books, Jax couldn't help but feel a pang of doubt. What if we're just delaying the inevitable? Hope took his hand, her grip firm. We're not just fighting for ourselves, Jax. We're fighting for everyone out there. She gestured to the city beyond the shattered windows. We're fighting for the chance to live again. Her words resonated within him, and he felt a fierce determination well up inside. He knew she was right. They had to keep pushing, keep moving forward. The next day, they received a message from an unexpected source, the leader of the regime, the very antagonist they sought to overthrow. He offered a meeting, a chance to discuss their grievances. It was a trap, of course, but one they couldn't resist. They approached the gleaming tower with trepidation, the heart of the city's control. The door slid open, revealing a pristine room. The leader, a man with a smile too wide and eyes too cold, waited for them. Welcome, he said, his voice in oil, slick on the air. I've been waiting for you. The tension was palpable as they stepped into the lion's den. Jax felt his muscles coil, ready for a fight. But Hope stepped forward, her smile as bright as the neon lights that bathed the city in perpetual twilight. Thank you for seeing us, she said, her voice clear and strong. The leader's eyes narrowed, and for a moment, Jax thought he saw a flicker of surprise. But then the smile was back, and the game began. The conversation was a dance, a delicate balance of threats and promises. The leader spoke of peace, of a return to order, but his words were hollow, a facade hiding the rot beneath. Jax's hand tightened around the makeshift weapon at his side, his heart pounding in his chest. Hope, however, remained poised. She listened to the leader's spiel, nodding in all the right places, her expression a mask of polite interest. But her eyes, those windows to her soul, never lost their spark of defiance. We have something you want, the leader said, his smile turning into a sneer. And in exchange, we ask for your cooperation. Jax felt his blood boil. What could you possibly have that we want? The leader leaned back in his chair, steepling his fingers. You seek to liberate the minds of the people, to free them from the shackles of ignorance. I can give you that, but it comes at a cost. Hope stepped closer to Jax, her hand resting gently on his arm. What cost? Your obedience, the leader replied, his eyes boring into theirs. You join us, or you watch your little rebellion burn. 
Jax looked at Hope, her eyes wide with horror at the proposal. They had come so far, sacrificed so much. They couldn't just hand it over now. We'll think about it, Hope said, her voice steady. But we won't make a decision today. The leader's smile grew colder. Very well. You have one week. After that, the city will be locked down and your friends outside will be hunted like animals. They left the tower, the weight of the ultimatum heavy on their shoulders. The city's pulse was quicker now, the drones more aggressive. They had poked a sleeping bear, and it was awake and angry. Back in the library, they gathered the rebels. The mood was tense, the air thick with a scent of fear. But Hope stood tall, her voice unwavering. We will not bow down to his demands. We will find another way. Jax knew she was right. They had to keep fighting, no matter the cost. They had started this, and they would see it through to the end. They spent long nights strategizing, building alliances with other pockets of resistance. The city became a battleground, a chessboard of shadows and steel. Every move they made was a risk, every step a gamble. But with each victory, no matter how small, the flame of a future without mindless control grew brighter. The day of the deadline approached, and with it, the sound of the city's heartbeat grew louder. The drones patrolled with greater ferocity, and whispers of the leader's wrath grew more ominous. But Jackson Hope had a plan. They had studied the city's blueprints, learned its secrets. They had found a way to disable the control center, to free the minds of the people from the regime's grip. The night of the final battle, they stood on the rooftop, the wind whipping through their hair. They looked out over the city they had once called home, now a prison. We can do this, Hope said, her hand in Jax's. He nodded. We have to. And with that, they leapt into the fray, their hearts beating in time with the city's pulse. The fight was brutal, a clash of ideals and desperation. But they had dreams on their side, and that was a powerful weapon. As the control center crumbled, the drones fell silent, and the lights of the city flickered and died. The people looked up, their eyes clear for the first time in years. They saw the stars, the promise of a world beyond the cage. The leader's tower stood tall, a monument to his power. But it was no match for the human spirit, for the desire to be free. Jax and Hope stood together, watching the city wake up from its slumber. They had started a revolution, and there was no turning back. The story of their rebellion spread like wildfire, inspiring others to rise up. The regime's grip began to loosen, and the world outside the city walls grew less terrifying. They knew it was only the beginning that the road ahead was fraught with danger and uncertainty. But for the first time in a long time, Jax felt alive. And as they watched the sun rise over the ruins of the old world, Jax felt something strange stirring within him. It was a feeling he hadn't felt in years, a feeling that seemed as alien as the open sky above them. It was a promise for a better future. The people of the city, now free from the constant surveillance and control, were waking up to a new day. They looked to Jax and hope, their faces a mix of fear and excitement. The weight of their gazes was heavy, but the two of them stood tall. They had given the people a taste of freedom, and now it was up to them to hold on to it. The first few weeks were chaotic. Without the regime's structure, there was looting, confusion, and fear. But Jax and Hope worked tirelessly, organizing the rebels into a makeshift government, restoring order with a firm but fair hand. The city slowly began to breathe again, to find its rhythm. But the leader wasn't one to give up easily. He had gone into hiding, but his loyalists remained, like cockroaches in the shadows, waiting for their chance to strike back. The whispers grew louder, the threats more direct. They had to find him, to end this once and for all. One night, as they pored over maps and intel in the library, a message arrived. It was cryptic, but it hinted at the leader's location. A trap, no doubt, but one they had to take. They gathered their most trusted allies and set out into the city, the air thick with the scent of rain and revolution. Their journey took them through the city's underbelly, a place they had never seen before. The streets were narrow, the buildings close together, and the air was thick with secrets. They moved like ghosts, avoiding patrols and traps, their hearts racing with every step. Finally, they reached the hidden lair, a bunker buried deep beneath the city's gleaming surface. The door was guarded by the elite of the regime's forces, their eyes dead and their smiles forced. Jax and Hope exchanged a look, and without a word, 
they launched their attack. The fight was brutal, a cacophony of gunfire and shouts. But the rebels were fueled by their newfound freedom, and they fought with a ferocity that took the enemy by surprise. Jax felt a grim satisfaction as he took down one soldier after another, each fall a step closer to their goal. And there he was, the man who had held them all in his thrall, the man who had taken their lives and twisted them into something unrecognizable. He was smaller than Jax had first anticipated, his eyes wild with desperation. You think you've won? He spat, his voice echoing in the concrete chamber. You're just pawns in a game you can't possibly understand. Hope stepped forward, her eyes shining with a fierce light. We understand enough, she said. We understand that no one has the right to control us, to take away our choices. The leader laughed, a high-pitched, maddened sound. Choices? What do you know of choices? You're nothing but animals, desperate for a taste of the power I've brought to this world. Jack stepped up beside her, his voice cold and hard. We know enough to know that we'd rather die free than live as your slaves. The leader's smile slipped, and for a moment, something flickered in his eyes. Fear, perhaps, or maybe just the dawning realization that he had underestimated them. He reached for a button, a last-ditch effort to destroy them all. But hope was quicker. She lunged, her hand slamming down on the control panel. The room went dark, and the air was filled with the smell of ozone. When the lights came back on, the leader was gone. But so was the sense of control that had once suffocated the city. The rebels had won, but the battle for the future had just begun. They emerged from the bunker, the city holding its breath. The rain had stopped, and the sun was breaking through the clouds. It was a new day, a new world. And as they stood there, soaked in sweat and victory, Jax knew that it was a world they had to build together. They had the plans, the knowledge, and the will. They had each other, and that was all they needed. The city was theirs to rebuild, their canvas to paint a new world upon. But first, they had to deal with the leader's loyalists. Jax and Hope set up a network of spies and informants, using the city's old surveillance system against those who still clung to the shadows of the regime. It was a grim task, but a necessary one. They couldn't let the embers of the old order flare up into a new inferno of tyranny. One by one, the loyalists were rooted out and brought to justice. Some were reformed, their eyes open to the truth. Others were not so lucky. The city had to be purged of the disease that had once controlled it. As the months passed, the city began to change. Gardens grew in the cracks of the pavement, and the metal and glass gleamed with new purpose. The rebels had become the rulers, but they ruled with compassion. They knew what it was like to be oppressed, and they had no desire to become the very thing they had fought against. But amidst the rebuilding, Jax couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. The leader had been too easy to overthrow, too willing to let them take the city. It was as if he had been playing a game, biding his time for the perfect moment to strike back. And then it came, a message broadcasted across the city's new, uncontrolled airwaves. The leader's voice still too cheerful, too smooth. He had a new offer, a new deal. He promised a world without pain, without fear, without choice. And for a moment, Jack saw the people hesitate, their eyes filled with doubt. He knew what they had to do. They had to show the city the truth, the reality behind the gleaming facade of the regime's promises. They had to expose the dark secret that had driven them to rebel in the first place. They gathered their closest allies, the ones who had fought beside them from the beginning. Together, they delved into the city's archives, searching for the key to the leader's power. The room was dusty, the air thick with the scent of decaying paper. But amidst the forgotten records, they found it. The truth of the city's creation, the reason for the leader's obsession with control. It was a secret so dark, so twisted, that it made Jax's blood run cold. The leader had been right about one thing. This was a game, but it was one he had never intended to lose. And now, Jax and Hope had to play it to the end, to save not just the city, but the very essence of what it meant to be human. The final act was set, the stakes higher than ever. The cynic and the optimist, united by fate and fire, prepared to face the monster they had uncovered. They had come so far, from the dull hum of the refinery to the heart of the rebellion. And as they stepped into the light, ready to reveal the truth, Jax felt something new stirring within him. It was hope, a hope that maybe, just maybe they could win this game. That maybe, in the end, 
Freedom was more than just a whisper in the wind. It was a roar, a thunder that could shake the very foundations of the world. They worked tirelessly, piecing together the story of the city's creation. It was a tale of ambition and madness, a cautionary fable that had been buried beneath layers of lies. The leader had promised a utopia, but what he had built was a prison for the mind. The truth was a bomb, and they had to drop it at just the right moment. They prepared a broadcast, a visual manifesto that would lay bare the horrors of the regime. Hope's voice was the narrator, her words painting a picture of a city born from a nightmare. Jax watched her, his heart swelling with pride. Despite the darkness they had faced, she remained a beacon of light. The day of the broadcast, the city held its breath. The air was thick with anticipation, the streets eerily quiet. They had risked everything for this moment, and now it was here. They stood in the makeshift control room, a room that had once been a bastion of the regime's power, now a beacon of rebellion. Hope's voice filled the city, her words echoing through the speakers that had once spouted the leader's empty promises. She spoke of the truth they had uncovered, the dark secret that had fueled the regime's grip on the city. Jax watched the screens, his eyes scanning the feeds from the surveillance cameras they had hijacked. The citizens' faces were a mix of shock and horror, their eyes wide with realization. The leader's loyalists scurried like rats in the open, desperate to shut down the signal. But it was too late. The genie was out of the bottle, and there was no putting it back in. The people were waking up, their eyes finally seeing the world for what it was. As the broadcast ended, the city erupted. The people rose up, their voices a thunderous roar that drowned out the last gasps of the regime. The loyalists were overwhelmed, their numbers too few to face the wrath of a city that had finally found its voice. Jax and Hope watched from the safety of the library, their hearts racing. The city was in chaos, but it was a beautiful chaos. It was the birth of a new world, a world where freedom was not just a distant dream, but a tangible reality. The leader's tower stood tall, a mocking reminder of the past. But it wouldn't stand for much longer. The rebels were coming, their numbers swelling with every passing minute. They had the truth on their side, and nothing could stop them now. The final battle was a storm of fury and hope. The streets were a battleground of shadows and light, the air filled with the cries of the oppressed and the shouts of the liberators. The leader's forces fell, one by one, until only the tower remained. They climbed the stairs, their footsteps echoing in the emptiness. The door to the leader's chamber lay open, a silent invitation to the endgame. Jax felt his heart pound in his chest, his hand tightening around his weapon. The leader was there, his smile gone, his eyes wild. He had lost the game, but he had one last card to play. He held a device, a weapon of mass destruction. You think you've won? He screamed, his voice a desperate wail. You think you could just take it all from me? Hope stepped forward, her voice calm and steady. We're not here to take anything. We're here to give it back to the people. The leader's laugh was a broken thing, a cackle of despair. You're too late, he said, his finger hovering over the button. The world is already mine. But Jax had seen something, a flicker of doubt in the man's eyes. He knew that deep down, the leader didn't believe his own lies anymore. He knew that he had lost and that knowledge was his undoing. With a swift move, Jax disarmed the device, the leader's grip on power slipping away like sand through his fingers. The man crumpled to the ground, a pathetic wreck of what he had once been. They had won. The city was theirs, but the real work was just beginning. They had to build a society from the ashes of the old, to create a world where freedom was not just a word, but a way of life. They stepped out onto the balcony, the city spread out before them. The people looked up, their eyes filled with hope. Jax took a deep breath, feeling the weight of their gazes. He knew what they were expecting, what they needed. He turned to hope, her eyes shining with the light of the new day. We did it, he said, his voice hoarse with emotion. We did, she replied, a smile playing on her lips. But we're not done yet. Together, they raised their fists to the sky, a symbol of their victory and the promise of a brighter future. The city roared its approval, the sound echoing through the streets like a call to arms. And so, the story of their rebellion continued, a tale of impossibility in the face of despair, of love in the shadow of the regime. They had started a revolution, and now they had to live up to it. The battle for the city was over, but the war for the world had just begun. Thank you for watching this video.
I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, consider subscribing to stay updated with our latest stories. Give us a like if you want to see more, and drop a comment below to let us know your thoughts.